All right, so hello everyone. My name is Rob, and I'm here to demonstrate some of the new features of Windows Terminal. Uh, if you're a Linux user and you're familiar with something such as Tmux, uh, you're going to love this functionality. It's pretty great. So with the new Windows Terminal, uh, it's not installed by default on Windows 10. So you need to open the Microsoft Store, go to your search, type in Windows Terminal, and then select your Windows Terminal result, and that will take you to this page. Uh, here, where I have a launch button, if yours is not installed, you will have an install button. So simply click that to install it. Once you get it installed, launch, installed, launch it out. Um, so this is the new Windows Terminal. As you can see, we have tabs up here. If we click down on the arrow button, we can view the different types of profiles that we can lo load. So we have Windows PowerShell, Command Prompt, Debian, the Azure Cloud Cell, Cloud Shell. Um, so what we want to do here first, I'm going to demonstrate panes because they're the best. Um, so what we do is uh, Alt-Shift equals, we'll create a vertical pane. Alt-Shift minus creates a horizontal plane. So now I have three panes open. I'm going to clear the contents of the one I'm currently in. I can execute commands and that's great. Now, what if I want to move to my other ones? Uh, to move to the other panes, simply hold down the Alt button, hit up. Now I'm in this pane and I can enter commands here if I like. Now, if I hold down the Alt button and hit left, I'm of course in this pane over here. Um, I can resize the size of these windows by doing a similar thing, holding down Alt Shift and using left to move things left, Alt Shift right. So I shift, yeah, Alt Shift right, Alt Shift left. If I hold Alt and go right into this window here, I can do a resize of this pane by holding Shift, Alt, and doing up and down arrows. See? So awesome. Now to exit these, we could simply type exit and hit enter, or we could also do Control Shift W, and that will close whatever pane window we are currently in. Um, just to make this window more familiar, I'm going to leave one open. Windows has an auto pane feature where they open a pane either vertically or horizontally based on whatever they think is best for your situation. So to do that, Alt-Shift-D, and Windows decided that was the best way to handle that. So uh, now that I have my pane open here, I can actually open new tabs up here. So as you might have noticed before, when I had this drop down, if we do Control Shift 1, that opens Windows PowerShell. Control Shift 2 opens Command Prompt. So we'll do those real quick. Bam. Now I have Command Prompt open. Control Shift 5 was Debian. I now have the Debian window open. And as an FYI, the reason I can open Debian and issue Linux commands is because in the Windows Store, I have the Debian app installed. And this is the Debian app that is installed. Um, you can also use OpenSUSE or Kali, whatever floats your boat. Uh, we'll cover more on that in a little bit. Um, so now with these open, another thing I can do is I can duplicate a terminal that I have open uh, or simply open a new tab. So if I do Control Shift T, that's a new tab and that opens my default, which is PowerShell. If I do Control Shift D for duplicate, or my bad, we'll start, we'll duplicate command prompt. So Control Shift D, this should open another command prompt. And it does. Now with PowerShell, if you have any modules or commands loaded into your current session and you duplicate the tab, it's not going to keep those, that information and carry it over. That all gets lost. It's just creating a new tab using that profile. Um, it, of course, loads the profile that you have in your profile variable. If you're not already um, familiar with that, I'm in Linux. So right now, just to show you, I'm going to change tabs without clicking. So to do that, um, 
I do Control Alt 1, which is my first tab. Control Alt 2 is my second tab. Control Alt 3 is my third tab. Control Alt Alt 4 is my last one. And what I was mentioning before I veered off into that is each profile that gets loaded for PowerShell loads the file in the profile variable. Here we can see it exists. And just to show you what file it is, it's uh, for Windows 7, it's in the PowerShell directory. That's just where I installed it. And the file is called Microsoft.PowerShell underscore profile.ps1. So if we read that file, well, for one, if you don't have that file made already, you can make it by simply doing note new dash item path is profile. Item type is, of course, file. And we'll do four, so we're not asked to confirm. And doing that would create that file. To show you the contents of mine, um, we do get content. All I'm doing really is changing the window title. That's why you see Osborne Pro up there with Tobor. Um, I changed the location. That's why my default location here uh, is C users Ravos. And uh, I also changed the verbose and warning color as well as the background color and my text color. Now there are more settings available than this. Um, each one of these profiles here that gets loaded, such as Windows PowerShell, Command Prompt, Debian, have a associated JSON objects or whatever associated with them. So if I open the settings, same way I would with VS Code or Atom, hold down Control, hit Comma, we're going to open our settings.json file for Windows Terminal, and we're going to be able to view those profiles. So here's our profile section. We can set defaults, which of course applies to all of the profiles, or we can set each one individually, which is what I've done. Um, so what you may notice here is uh, all these have, that's the PowerShell icon, that's the command prompt icon, the Linux icon. Um, up, oops. If I use Control Shift One, I'm going to open PowerShell with my company icon. So Control Shift One, I now have a new tab with my company icon and the background image. So I did that by modifying the settings.json file. I added an icon value and set the path to the image I wanted set. I did the same thing for background image. And of course, we have the background image opacity set, the image alignment, and image stretch mode so that it looks normal. Um, this could go in defaults in which it would apply to everything, or it can just be my main PowerShell window there, which is what I have it set as. Um, you are also able to change your commands if, they, if the key shortcuts or key combos are not what you're used to. You can change them to whatever you want down here. Uh, command palette, if you use VS Code or um, Atom, this is something similar to there where we can, where are you? Oh. Control Shift P is our command palette, and this shows us a list of all the different key combos we can use. So, of course, uh, we have the switch to new tab, Control Alt, and then the number of the tab that we're on, how to split the pane. Uh, horizontal or vertical, which is Alt Shift Plus or Alt Shift Minus. Uh, open your settings file, Control Comma, all those things are in here. Uh, you know, feel free, free to explore if you like. Another thing similar to Tmux is we have our search capability. So if I do get process and then I want to find Control Shift F, I open my find search window in the top right corner here. And we're going to search SVC host. And what this does is find the first result from the bottom of the terminal window. Every time I hit enter, it goes to the next result up. So next, it's going to go to uh, this one, and then this one, and then this one, etc. So we'll go do, 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 do. Uh, duh. So that's that. If we want to now with PowerShell, we have all our tabs up here. We need to change the title window value. 
And to do that, we issue the command host dot UE same, this would be the same as PowerShell 5 or the normal PowerShell window that you have. The hosts um, and default variable or environment variable UE dot raw UE dot window title equals we'll call this one derp. And now we can see my Windows title is now called derp. And command prompt we have to do it a little differently, but it's much easier. Just simply title and uh, hello. So now my command prompt title window is hello. <clears throat> and same thing here, we can change host UE raw UE window title and equals world. So it's backwards. Great. So now we know how to create different panes, how to resize them, how to move in between them, how to close them, how to open up new tabs, how to open up either a PowerShell tab like that, or a command prompt tab, or a Linux tab, whatever floats our boat here. We know how to rename the titles up here so we can say maybe we're hosting a simple HTTP server, right? So now we know that's there. Maybe here is going to be where we do our Nmap scans. So we'll name that Nmap kind of deal. Um, what else do I got in my notes here? Another thing that can be done, which I'm not really a fan of, is we can open Windows Terminal from yeah, uh, File Explorer. So what we're doing here is WT is short for Windows Terminal, so WT.exe executable. Dash D is the directory, and dot is, well, for the current directory we're in. So WD dash D dot. And you can see it opens our terminal from that location. However, um, because of my profile that I have set in the uh, content profile, that value gets reset because I have a set location. So it's kind of a bad example that I'm giving you there. Um, if I didn't have that there, this command in File Explorer would open Windows Terminal. Another thing that's pretty awesome is we have this customization, which is great. Uh, we can also, um, I create a desktop shortcut. So I'm clicking all around too quick here. So if we search wt.exe, right click on it, open file location, and then we're going to right click again and modify our properties. And just show, sorry, I just messed that up for us. So we're going to go there again, wt.exe, open file location. What I meant to do was send to desktop. And what that does is, of course, create a desktop shortcut. Now, if you right click on that, go to properties, under the shortcut tab, we have our target value, which can be used to execute uh, command line arguments. So I'm going to delete this since I don't really need it. I created one already here called WT. So we're going to modify that shortcut properties. And what this does, just to show you the line I have, is executes WT.exe, creates a new instance, split pane, pane name Debian, uh, split it verbosely, or verbosely, um, vertically, and then split pane command prompt. So when I open this, I'll leave that up just for now. When I open this shortcut, it opens Windows PowerShell, Command Prompt, and uh, Debian. So right now I have, uh, let's say, PS, PS version table. All right now, if I do Alt Right, um, I probably don't have. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we can see this is Linux. If I hold Alt down, we can see LS does not work, but DIR does, implicating PowerShell, not Command Prompt. Um, and also, I named it Command Prompt. Um, I can call it whatever I want. That was just a uh, uh, the, the name for the window or whatever that's there. So each one I collect or click on has a different name up top in the tab. As you can see, every time I click, 
changes. Um, so that's our split pane thing there. Uh, creating a shortcut. And I believe I have covered everything I wanted to there. I hope this uh, encourages the use of this awesome application. Uh, it's definitely become my new, maybe use Windows a little more often, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for watching.